Oh, you were a very creepy, crazy guy. Uh -huh. So where do you put this Bible thumping, you know, Salem living he's like, guy he's in like that you spectrum? Take all of those characters and squish them into a body, and and that's Cotton Mather. Um, he's like he's exploring all the different sides of himself. I mean, I, uh, you, you referenced Arrow and Count Vertigo. I'm so glad I got to do yeah. Count Vertigo before this because Cotton Mather is trying so hard to be a good person, but he has a Count Vertigo inside of him. And uh, he doesn't know what to do with it. You know, he has these primal instincts that just want to come out, and he just wants to have sex and be crazy. <laughs> but he's a Puritan, and he's charged with, you know, finding witches and killing them. And um, and so he's he's a very conflicted person. Have, have you done any research? That looks like this. <laughs> yes, that looks exactly Are you like that. that. <laughs> don't have to wear. A wig uh, like we that? tried. We tried to do that. It just didn't quite work out. Uh, have, have you read any of his? any of his work to kind of influence his I have. It, it's or? pretty awesome, too. Yeah. I, I mean, he's very eloquent. Um, and what's cool about him is he's he's a theologian and he's a scientist. So he's a bit of a contradiction as well. And, and we definitely embellish that um, and have, have uh, a version of the character that uh, goes to many extremes. But I think to, to be a scientist during that time was heretical. And so... Uh, I don't know, it's just that, that adds to the conflict within himself of having these beliefs in the devil. And the real Cotton Mather, he writes about the devil, and he, this is a man who believes it, you know, who believes that, like, there is a creature out there that wants your soul, and, like, every day is a battle. And, like, when you really believe that, like, so deeply in that he's and that it's you're actively involved in a war like what does that do to you and the pressure too i mean you could just crack under that uh i think that combined with a society that was puritanical that was about repressing so many of our natural instincts and then taking those and saying those are all the devil's um deeds or you know those are all devil feelings you can't feel those but then you still feel them you you start to question yourself and so i think um cotton mather is tormented by in this show he's tormented by by, um, you know, hunting down witches, but ultimately feeling like he's hunting himself. Do you think audiences will be conflicted about what they feel about Cotton? Like, yeah. whether they like him, whether they hate him? Yeah, I mean, I think in the pilot you go on that ride of, like, first hating him and think he's perhaps a flat villain, and then he changes and he's actually like a charming lover who's sleeping with a prostitute wait a minute that's not the guy I knew um, and then he goes back to being a jerk and a dumbass and um, I think I think he's a character audiences will love to hate and hate to love what will um, you know you said he, but also love to hate to love <laughs> you said Cotton has is you know has an internal struggle how does the town and the see him um, they see him as the son of a great man, um, and so by extension, he is perhaps great, um, but at the same time, he's a lesser version of his father, and they prefer his father. And um, that will come into play at some point, and uh, I think we'll meet my father at some point, um, who should be a very uh, ominous presence and very powerful and intimidating. And uh, I think you'll see a lot of why Cotton is the way he is um, as a result of the circumstance he was raised in. Um, and the unfair perceptions of him, of who he is, because he's born an aristocrat, and so there's certain assumptions made about him that he isn't really those things. Can you talk about the different actors you get to work with on this show? Yeah, I mean, one's over there, Shane West, awesome. Everyone is awesome. I'd worked with Janet Montgomery before. We had done um, the Gothic yeah. pilot together. I don't know if anyone saw that, but it was an ABC show, and it had dealt with monsters and all kinds of stuff. Um, so it was really fun to, to work with her. And I feel like everyone is excellent. Um, there are no weak links in this cast, and everyone is um, really perfect for their role. And um, we go out there, the costumes are so great, the set is so great, the lighting design is so great because it's done fire, like there's real fire because we're in Shreveport, we're able to actually have that on set. Um, that when you're all dressed up and you're out there with the actors, like you're there, you're in the 1690s in Salem, and there's no real acting you have to do except to say the right lines do you like being scruffy all the time i kind of do i don't have to shave it's great. <laughs> how many episodes is the first season uh 13 yeah 
Might you ever have time to return to Arrow, even if he's supposedly dead? Uh, I might. I took three arrows to the chest, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> 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 Malcolm's still alive, so... Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Anything is possible. The um, Mark Guggenheim called me, and I he didn't know I had read the script yet, but I'd read it and saw that I died, and he was kind of preparing me for the, like, you died thing, and he was like, no one ever really dies on Arrow, and I was like, you can stop there. I take three arrows to the chest, and I fall down, like, t- a 20 story building I think I'm dead I had a great time don't worry about it he's like still no one's ever really dead on air and I was like okay we'll see <laughs> but now Count Vertigo will have a beard yes now Count Vertigo will have a beard <laughs> just CGI it off he comes back from the afterlife and he's like ah we grow facial hair yeah what's it like shooting in Shreveport versus Vancouver <laughs> uh, it's very different although it was still cold and like we're near Texas and it was cold and I, someone was explaining it's because the cold air from Canada gets funneled between like the two mountain ranges and comes down and I was like ah. <laughs> I thought so I escaped when do you get finished production? I think in May <laughs> oh good Louisiana in May but, yeah. but then I'll be hoping for the cold I'll be like where's all the cold <laughs> but does the cold weather help evoke the feeling of the 18th century uh, I think so yeah yeah I think I was worried shooting Louisiana knowing you know this is a, a story that took place in the northeast and the northeast has a very distinct feel to it but surprisingly the foliage I don't know I'd be talking about foliage in an interview but the foliage where we're shooting uh, has a northeastern feel to it it's not like that New Orleans Louisiana that has like swampy things hanging down like, yeah, it's more Arthur Miller than Tennessee Williams. You talked about um, how Cotton's, you know, he's he shows some compassion or love with the prostitute. So does, is that where he finds his emotional connection, or does he yeah, have I another think, emotional outlet? I think when Cotton's being naughty... Uh, like, the one place he's able to be himself is in the brothel, because there's no one there judging him. There's no one there saying anything is wrong. When you're, when you're at the brothel, everything is right. <laughs> um, so it all feels good. And um, his whole life he's had to repress what feels good to him, and um, to have an outlet for that, it's extremely explosive. You'll see this scene where he's first in the brothel. It's, it's, it's creepy. It's intense, because... Um, this is a person that's been repressed for so long, like getting out all of these feelings at one time, and uh, it's pretty cool. Okay. Did, did you see the trailer today? Did yeah. You, was that the first time you've seen? Second time. Second they time. showed it to us once earlier today. Oh, and what was that experience like? It was awesome. We were all like, all the actors high fived. Because, like, when you do a show, you just don't know how it's going to turn out, and you don't know how it's going to be edited, you don't know how all the pieces are going to come together. And sometimes it could feel really good on the set, and then you watch it, and you're like, Oh, I guess I was wrong about that. But watching the trailer, like, it looks the way it felt on set. Perhaps it's even better because when we shot it, it felt amazing. We were all like, "Okay, we're we're doing something cool here." Um, I think that's a testament to the writing and everyone involved. I mean, this was a straight to series order. That's how good the first script was. Uh, and because the script is so great, like everybody rose to the the challenge of it. And does it feel great, uh, sort of breaking new ground at WGN America? Yeah, I really like. I like being like, a part of a new network. Um, I think they're being bold and they're being very smart. Um, I think they've had a long time to, you know, Peter Liguori is involved as well, and so I think they're able to take all of the experience from FX and like everything they've witnessed from the AMC's and HBO's and Showtime's and you know this whole cable endeavor and kind of take the best of and create a new network with that in mind. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Right. Thank, thank you. you very much.